I admit it. I'm a generalist. A generalist is one of those people that um, other people would consider a jack of a lot of trades. That's me. Got a lot of skills. I'm not complaining. Quite grateful. When I was younger, I used to think that, man, how come I can't keep focused? Why do I have all these ideals? Why do I want to do all these different things with my life? And I realized, you know, when I was young and even now that that's just who I am. I love chasing momentum. You know, I have like 10, 12 projects going on right now. You know, I keep my business going to keep my money coming in. So my projects are secondary, but uh, that's just who I am. I'm a generalist. If being a generalist is an addiction, then that would be me. I've got to do things the way that I want. I gotta have my own business. I don't like taking orders from nobody and I don't want to be chasing nobody for some order or whatever. Either you like my stuff or not. I'm tired of jumping back and forth with all these different um people that are talking about, hey, you should do it this way. You should do it that way. You should be on Facebook. You should be on um, Instagram. You should be on Twitter. I'm not even feeling social media. So if I can't make my money online, then fine. I make my money offline. I was making my money offline before online came into the picture. You know what I'm saying? I don't like those algorithms they're programming you know what I mean it's straight programming your mind well maybe not you because you're a generalist and you ain't got time for all that but all I'm saying is all my life I've been making my money in the real world and right now yes internet is one way to make some cash but it's not the only way so you generalists out there stick to your gun but let me tell you some secrets though what I found out because I couldn't even understand the word focus I mean even now as an adult it's like how can I focus on one thing I got all these thoughts going on I have all these things going on but you know what? It's okay. I learned to just love myself the way I am. If I want to create a project, if an idea comes to my mind, if I want to jump into it, fine. I am learning to focus a little bit from a perspective that I am dwindling it down. I have major projects and minor projects. I keep thinking, okay, fine, let me just get these little small ones out the way. Then I can focus on the big ones. But the only problem is smaller I other ideals keep coming up that I can kind of sit into the small category. Like right now, I got 51 domains. Okay, most of them, you know, I do have uh, the websites on them because I can do my own websites and landing pages so when I get an idea I can literally knock it out um, and put it online like in an hour really less and so but I'm getting to the point where you know it's like come on now you know you got some projects that can make you some money seriously oh, man I've had so many ideals over the years I'm not even gonna get into them or whatever all I'm saying with this video is you generalists you know if you like me you're after the chase, you know, you're on a project and then, you know, we're almost done and then huh, we run out of steam. It's like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. I need something else. I thought it was the chase, but now I realize what it is. It's momentum. It's momentum. That's what's keeping me like chasing. I'll be working on a project. The momentum will keep me up all night long until I finish it, right? I mean, there might be some little bugs I might need to fix or something. I mean, you know, I can write a book overnight, okay? Like I said, I can do a website in an hour. I can do a podcast. I can do really a lot of stuff. Really on the creative side, um, mostly writing, editing films of that nature, photography, like I said, website. What else I got going on? Of course, finances. I got to stay on top of finances, my bookkeeping and taxes, but that's just only a couple of things that I do. And I'm so grateful I have all these skills because I feel like uh, I can make a lot of cash in my lifetime. And I'm sure if I were to focus, I'd really make some cash, but um, I have at least 15 skills. Okay. I won't brag, so I won't go into them, but I do seriously. And um, it's like, <laughs> as generalists, that's just how we are. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's crazy, but um, I'm blessed. I'm blessed but I just want you generalists to know if you can't focus on something because your momentum has you chasing projects you get real close and then you like eh, I'll start something else but then you wind up going back to that project I don't know for me it's almost like a pyramid a lot of my projects are interconnected especially my films they're all it's all interconnected you know it's just and I just feel I'm unlimited but what I don't have is unlimited time and that's what I want to tell you entrepreneur generalists you know start focusing I know I use that word focus and I'm not even the best at it myself but I'm telling you what we're chasing is momentum that's our dopamine you know what I'm saying momentum we working on something we get that energy and then we're on it until the energy is exhausted and we're like oh on to another project or we'll go back to an existing project but I'm here to tell you it's okay to be a generalist it's okay to be a jack of a whole bunch of different trades especially right now I don't even want to say the word trades I want to say skills okay and um if you're wondering um where you're at just to look around you like for instance me I, I mean I've been on the planet for a minute and it's like I was like man well what am I supposed to be doing what am I supposed to be doing I got all these skills you 
know, I can't help it. You know, like I said, I have 51 domains, half of them. Oh, maybe I won't say half. At one time, I had at least 20 websites up. Um, I think maybe I have maybe 15 right now, even though I have the 51 domains. And um, I try to put something on them. Uh, but uh, what I was going to say is if you don't know um, what you're supposed to be doing, all I can say, um, being an entrepreneur, because I stopped taking orders. <laughs> Let me just digress a little bit. Uh, when I used to work as a temp. And the reason I work as a temp is because I didn't want to work full time all the time because I was doing my films and, and, and my, my magazine and everything else I was doing, right? And so um, one day I remember um, I was working for this um, company in West Los Angeles and um, this white guy, he was clowning this black dude. He was basically saying, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? If you can't get the work done, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, he didn't say motherfucker. But he might as well have been saying it. You know, and I was like, damn. <sighs> but I know dude had to pay bills, right? And I don't know if dude was clowning him because he, because you know, he, you know, he was in front of me, but it was just deep. And he was, his face was red. He was like going to have like a heart attack or something, I thought. But the whole point is, you know what? I've, re I've realized right at that moment, uh, I can't be working for nobody talking shit to me like that. You know what I mean? I had to clown a few people being a temp. Oh yeah, I let them have it because I was a temp. I might have lost the uh, count, you know? And one more thing. If I do work for somebody, they're, they're my clients. Everybody. Even when I was collecting a W-2, anybody I work for or work, I don't even say for, I say work with, they're my clients, okay? And so that's how I got into the, the game of just sticking to my guns, you know, and doing it the way that I want to do it, how I want to live my life. And working for someone ain't it. So anyway, um, getting back to how do you know what you're supposed to do? Now, this is my little two cents. So I had to go back and think, what was my earliest memory of making some money? Well, that's an easy one. I was a little criminal. I can remember when I was about four or five years old, mom's putting some shoes on my feet, um, brother and my twin, uh, sister and another sibling and told us to walk out of Kmart. And we did. Shoo. I think that, uh, no, I wasn't four or five. I'm sorry. Well, maybe six or seven. But whatever happened thereafter, it was on and cracking. I became a little criminal. I was pretty good, actually. <laughs> but then when I got about 13, I was put in a girl's school, blah, 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 blah. It was crazy. It's a long story. But in the end, I realized still it wasn't the way to go. So I wound up, you know, doing a little time and stuff. And I remember when I was 30 years old, uh, I was, I did something stupid. I mean, it was stupid anyway. I wasn't stupid. I was doing some credit card fraud stuff, whatever. It was crazy. Anyway, I get into all that. But the judge said, I'm sorry, my probation officer said, uh, you know what? Most people after the age of 30, they're still a criminal. They'll probably be a criminal the rest of their lives. I was like, ooh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like that when he said that. And so I t turned my life around. You know what I mean? Because I was in a situation where I'm working in finance. So I used to do companies in. I don't know what the statute of limitations are. So I'm not going to say too much about that. But yeah. And even now, um, the bigger I get with my company, I'm thinking, oh man, I better be cool because I got some karma coming still. And that's okay. If somebody steals something from me, it's okay because I know what I've done and uh, my past. So stealing was the first thing. And then uh, I always had a camera. I always had a camera. Even before digital cameras, I always had a camera. I had a, one of those cameras that you press it and the pictures come out automatically. For whatever reason, that amazed me. Probably at about 11 years old or whatever. So I was stealing cameras and the film or whatever. And I still have pictures of... Uh, people that I took pictures of when I was young. It's crazy, right? And so that was one, taking pictures. And from the uh, regular camera, when video cameras came on the scene, then I start doing video cameras. Actually a combination of them both. And then I start shooting my own little films, whatever, whatever, whatever. Got into um, editing with Final Cut Pro. As a matter of fact, I was one of the first few people to use Final Cut Pro. And I was actually training other people how to use Final Cut Pro. But then, you know, I got bored and went on to something else. But anyway, the whole point I'm saying is, um, so when I first look at my life, the first thing I was doing was stealing. I know, horrible. Reminds me of this movie, um, um, Trading Places, where Eddie Murphy was on the street with a little can, and he was acting like he didn't have no legs or something. And um, these two white guys, the main characters, um, walk by. They didn't want to give him no money, and they're like, "Oh, I bet he been stealing since he was a baby." I kind of laughed to myself because I kind of felt like that. <clears throat> I've been, I was stealing at such a young age, you know, out of desperation. Everybody goes through stuff, but anyway. So anyway, so stealing, and then photos, and I was always writing these little stories, right? And um, always writing my little stories, and then. And um, when I was locked up in the girls' school for about a year and a half, um, I wrote this story and uh, the counselor, uh, it was just uh, some dude in black pants and a black t-shirt and doing whatever, right? And then the counselor said to me, so is that is that boy you? I'm, I'm, I'm a female, right? I'm thinking, man, what was going on with me that, matter of fact, I don't even think um, I even said what the gender was. And so uh, when she said that, it was like, hmm, did she hit on something that I wasn't aware of, right? And so anyway, so then, okay, fine. 
I stopped writing and then I was writing about this girl in high school right all my notes because something deep was going on I gotta get into the details or whatever and I dropped my little notebook and my cousin found it right and so he read it and then came back to talk to me about gay people whatever whatever right and so then I stopped writing again years later uh, I wind up uh, let's say about 10 years uh, about mm, maybe 14 years later I wind up putting out a gay magazine long story I'm not gonna get into it so so first it was um the uh stealing uh then the uh taking photos then the videos and uh the writing as a matter of fact when I think about when I first start writing a magazine I actually said something in my little brochure that's how it got started I said something about well, yeah I went to this gay uh lesbian meeting or whatever and um the women you know really weren't that attractive I didn't mean that in a disrespectful way it was nobody that fit my taste not to say they were you know not attractive and then they hemmed me up at this party and I'm like oh man my words have power right that was the first time and so then anyway um so that skill and then when the internet came on the scene you know I started doing um somebody was doing a website for me and you know it's like dude give me control of my website I'll figure it out myself right and so um so then I started doing webs and um because of that came so much and I was on the scene when photoshop started i was on the scene when illustrator and and dreamweaver and all those guys was on this i was on the scene when d-base was on the scene i can go back y'all because i've been around for minutes i can go back right so i have all these i went to computer school everything right matter of fact if i didn't smoke weed i would have been a killer programmer that's why with social media i'm such a stickler you know what i mean and the metaverse thing i'm telling you people don't do it once you get i'm talking about addiction social media is already an addiction but that um that metaverse i don't even want to try it but there's so many reasons because now you're messing with my mind you're already messing with my mind not anymore with social media i'm not saying facebook is bad it's just if I, when i was on facebook not that i was really on it because i knew the power of programming because that's what it is programming like tv programming right the power of it right and it's like you know of course i want to try to sell something so the first thing i got facebook i'm dumping all my stuff trying to sell something i realized that's not what it was about it was really about getting people's information for one tracking them for two uh and then also programming people's confidence oh i didn't get a like today or whatever it's like what I, when i first saw that it was like no way right and so i said let me try it again just recently let's say maybe six months ago i was on there for 10 hours right like in one week it may not sound like a lot but for my time it was a lot and i just dumped i had facebook on there because family friends and all that you know and even that that's a problem you know oh yeah let me just uh go back to my little criminal days and that's another reason why i'm on, not on facebook <laughs> because in my criminal days i got real good i remember i had like maybe like maybe seven uh uh, ID cards from DMV. Um, excuse me, DMV, if you're listening. This is a long time ago. I'm sure my statutes of limitations is up. But they used to, uh, you know, you take your little, uh, uh, what is it, birth certificate. And matter of fact, I used to sell birth certificates because when I got my birth certificate, I, you know, just for my own records. And then I saw it had this little seal. And then so one day I was over at a friend's house and she had a seal for a uh, notary and so what i did was i started selling <laughs> i mean i mean it was a corporation i'm sorry it was a corporation seal right and um uh, so i start doing these uh birth certificates and stamping the birth certificate i mean the um the uh, corporate seal on the birth certificate but i made it ever so slight so that the representative at dmv wouldn't pay attention wind well, up getting seven ids right i can't do that now obviously but the whole point was uh man I was taking people's identity. I, I, well, not really people. I was using my own, but actually I did do this one person and got this serious computer system, but that's another story. I'm a criminal, ex-criminal. I wouldn't do anything like that now because I care about other people's feelings and, you know, I, I just, it wasn't cool. But I really primarily, when I took, when I embezzled and all that stuff, that was from companies. I didn't really do individuals. I did feel bad about the person with the computer. I sold her the computer. Then I used her identity and got me a supercomputer. Anyway, it's a long time ago. And uh, anyway, <laughs> she had money. She, she was a doc. Oh man, that was a good story. Ooh, I'm not gonna get it to it right now, man. But anyway, so anyway, all I'm saying is that um, you know, in order for you to figure out what you're really supposed to be doing on the planet, you have to go back into your past and see what you were passionate about. And I'm serious. Um, just within the last year, I, what am I supposed to be doing? I have all these skills. What what am I supposed to be bringing to the earth? And so there was a time when I said, okay, fine. Um, I had three record stores in Hollywood at different times, right? Rap record stores, right? Some people that hear me, they may know what I'm talking about. Some don't. It don't matter. And so um. Um, so I had these record stores and um, because of the record stores uh, um, I was getting um, all these posters and then I was getting music videos and I was playing the music videos in the store and I said you know I can do this and so well I started shooting music videos I said okay fine I'm gonna shoot my first 25 music videos for free and I did for customers and stuff blah 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 I know I need to update my website it's called poisonousrecords.com I haven't even got around to it because I want to do a doc right but so much time is going by I'm running out of time so anyway um, so that's how I learned to do music videos did the first 25 free and then wind up doing 
in about 10 or 15 after that and then i got into it some tupac look-alike in oakland um not him somebody uh that was there on the video scene and um it's like it was getting dark and i was like dude we gotta do this and this dude said bitch i looked at the artist i was like you know this motherfucking shit is over i ain't gonna be fighting no dude or whatever but man he just didn't even know he just didn't know if he'd have caught me at the wrong moment i would have stabbed him you know what i'm saying but anyway that's another story anyway like so that's why i got the music business so anyway so i'm still doing all this stuff the magazine the, mus the music videos the websites i have the serious computer background and um that's what i was getting to in reference to social media the bottom line is i'm like this whole metaverse i'm telling you you start putting those gargles on uh i probably will eventually but i already know that whoever programmed the app as they call them now uh can do anything they can have some um, subliminal information going into your subconscious mind that's what bothers me that's what bothers me about all social media platforms because people are getting addicted and their confidence is being based on that it's crazy but anyway so that's why i don't do social media so so you're not going to find me anywhere. I think, um, okay, I canceled uh, Facebook. I had an Instagram, which I did nothing with. I just put it there just to be doing something. It's sitting there. I don't even bother. And Facebook, when it leaves, that's fine. I don't do Twitter. Uh, I don't do uh, TikTok. And people might say, well, how are you making your money? It's like, well, how are you making your money? In the real world, face-to-face, -face, seeing people, you know? I just can't. I know people might be saying, ah, oh, Facebook is a billion people. Right. That's the problem. I'm a leader, not a follower. Not to say that people want Facebook followers, but there's something going on with Facebook. Facebook, and I already know actually their algorithm is deep. Matter of fact, all these social media algorithms are deep. It's all about eyeballs. That's how they make their money. You know, it ain't based on people's information, how many people are watching whatever you know what i'm saying so that's why i don't and i don't like it when people try to say ah oh, well you know you gotta be on facebook it's like no i don't have to be doing nothing i'm living in the real world with my four cell phone anyway that's another story because i'm about to drop a book and this will be number 12 um about becoming invisible online and i'm gonna tell you a secret it starts with gift card get you a gift card get you a phone under that gift card before it's too late because pretty soon they're going to be they're going to be asking for ids to get a phone so if uh you want to um go ahead and um maneuver on online invisibility you have to start first with a gift card which you can buy at albertson's pay cash okay and then go from there and then get you a phone under that gift card before it's too late all right i'm not even going to talk about the vpn as far as um when you get online and using your computer and stuff but i will say get you an old school think bad maybe you know something maybe 2000 i don't know 16 17 before um they start changing stuff i'm talking about a system with xp on it windows you know xp right i know that's going back right but the whole point is if you want to be online, you really should be invisible. Right now, my, my information is out there. It's limited. There's only maybe two pictures that people can see on me, maybe three tops. And I've been online from the beginning, right? But people don't know what I look like unless I put something out there, right? And so anyway, um, I'm saying all that to say is that social media was never on my radar with all my skills. And yes, I did not. I know how to navigate them all. And I did advertise on Facebook because I want to make me some money. Uh, but the whole point is, is that I realize, uh, but they're all algorith they're algorithms always get to me it's not a person it's the algorithm algorithms and how they have a program and because if i didn't smoke weed like i said i would have definitely went into the engineering business or the computer programming business but then again i have the background and the writing and photos and videos and all that stuff right but anyway the whole point that i'm saying is i finally realized after everything that i'm going through that okay fine i'm a writer i have these books okay no i'm a film director no i'm a film editor uh no i'm a magazine publisher mm, no I should be doing websites. Mm, nah, mm, nah. Maybe I should write an app or two. Mm, maybe I should go back to school for computer programming. Mm, no. The whole point is, in the end, um, it is writing, right? So I said, okay, if it's writing, then it must be books. No money in that, right? I mean, it's potential. I said, well, no. And in the end, it's like, well, uh, and I don't have a degree. I couldn't even figure it out. I went to school initially about advertising and marketing. Oh, I forgot about advertising and marketing. Don't even get me started into that. And my whole marketing background and my marketing websites. Long story. I'm not going to get into that. But, um, the bottom line is, though, no, after all these, I still don't have a degree. I'm working on my degree now. Okay, I said, okay, fine. It must be. Okay, I was going after my accounting degree. You know, it's a long story. Still, I'm still working on it, right? Then I said, no, it must be English because I'm a writer. I said, okay, fine. I'm a writer. I'm a writer. Then I realized, yeah, you know what? You are a writer, but you're not limited to books. You can do magazines. You can do newsletters, a business plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many businesses have I had? Oh, I don't 
don't know, maybe 25 or 30 businesses. And then when the internet came on, I was starting a business with a website. And if it didn't work out, didn't I didn't make it legitimate. And um, my publishing company is legitimate. My bookkeeping and tax company is legitimate. Oh yeah, people, let me just mention taxes. I stay on top of the tax game because it ain't going nowhere. And so I've been doing my own taxes since I was 15. So nobody's ever done my taxes. I feel like I'm a pretty good master of the game. You could never be a full master of taxes because they're always changing. Them. And if you were to see all the tax laws in one room, it'd probably fill it up. Who knows? Uh, books, right? But the whole point is, is that, um, so I know I'm jumping around, but this is how my mind goes. You've got the flow. You're getting the real deal. I never talk like this on the internet, you know? But anyway, I'm doing it. And so anyway, the tax game, you know what I'm saying? I'm staying on top of that so I can maneuver my thing. And I'm letting you guys know that 2022 is the year that the IRS said, you know, enough is enough. Well, actually in 2021, they said enough is enough. People that, um, with all who be sending money with Venmo and, and PayPal and Square and, and, and through their bank, etc., etc., they're going to be getting a 1099. That means if somebody paid you over $600, you're going to get a 1099K. And if you don't know about that and you file your taxes, you're going to get out of it. Matter of fact, it's going to be so many people getting out of it next year. If you happen to be listening to this, if you got anybody paying you in cash, but not greenbacks, they're paying you via, uh, like I said, one of the third party um, providers, you're going to get a 1099. So if you're selling a Etsy, eBay, Amazon, PayPal, any of those guys, Square, Venmo, you know what I mean? If you're going through your bank account, like Wells Fargo payment tech yeah payment is a payment yeah payment tech is who you're gonna get a 1099 from what's that other one that everybody uses Zelly. yeah a lot of people using that to get money and I'm telling you even though Zelle won't be issuing the 1099k what's happening is your bank will do it that says a lot I always tell people anyway they better watch out because there's gonna well it's already happening but it hasn't been official yet where the IRS and your bank will be talking to each other and it's really gonna be hard to maneuver taxes at that point but right now starting next year um it's definitely going to take place as a bookkeeper in my um real life situation and i prepare taxes i see some clients getting all this money thinking they getting cash right oh the government i mean the irs don't know what i'm doing because i'm using zale right please or i'm using them or i'm using blah 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 all that is changing even if you get a gift from someone you better make sure that in your um memo you say the word gift or something because if you don't say what the income is starting next year you're gonna get a 1099k and life will never be the same again it's already changing because of that but anyway i digress the name is Zell, watch out for that. And the IRS, if you're listening, I'm good with you. I'm just giving some information. But I'm going to tell you, people, start using money as long as you can as, until it's gone. Because there's going to be a day where there won't be any green, there won't be any coins, all that kind of stuff will be in a museum one day. Everything going to be digital. And that's going to be horrible. Anyway, getting back to what I'm supposed to be doing. So I said, fine, right. It must be books. But I realized, no, it can't just be books. There ain't no money in that. But it could be. Because I can turn a book into a script and turn a book into a business. I mean, I mean, you can write a business plan. You can do all these things by writing. It could even be a program could be an app so i already know that writing is definitely it but man what about my camera skills though and all these other skills and so if you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do i don't want you to be scattered like me of course but um just figure out what you've been doing all your life and then like right now if i had to choose i got so much going on man it's crazy but if i had to choose out of all my skills which one is the most important to me i love my camera i do um i love writing too so if i narrow down to those to be honest after all my skills are truly narrowed down to those two i love my camera but I got to deal with other people to make things happen. But not necessarily because I do my little animated videos and I don't need people in them. But um, I would say um, I finally narrowed it down to writing. If I was on an island and I could only take, um, you know, two or three things and there is no internet, it would have to be pencils and paper. So I can write even if it's not, even if it's not to anybody. I just got to get the thoughts out of my head. You know, if I finally get rescued, I'm like, dang, you know, wrote five, 10, 20 million books. What's up? But that's just me. So if you want to figure out what you need to do in your life, you have to look at what you've been doing and then narrow it down. Okay. The creator is going to be giving you one idea. What is it going to be? Because like I said, I used to think, okay, writing, that's fine. I can only write books. But then I just realized recently, um, I can write a script. I can write a play a business plan i can write a human resource book i mean the whole point is uh i can go in a lot of different directions and so i would tell you generalists fellow generalists to look around you and try to narrow it down to one thing and start getting focused on that easier said than done for me because i'm right there with you but um that's what i'm gonna say i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up in about 30 minutes uh because i can definitely go on but i have so many stories and just some more information i can give you but um hey y'all take care leave facebook alone don't do metaverse 
oh yeah that metaverse is going to be a piece of work it's going to have so many people addicted they are not going to be able to deal with reality so anyway um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and cut this short i was gonna go ahead and do 30 actually i did do 31 but i by the time i cut it and edited everything down it got down to 24 but people fellow generalists i know how you feel what do you do with your life you got all these decisions all these skills because you are a generalist a person of a lot of trades what could i tell you if you're still young just get your degree out the way get it out the way a a b a whatever it is because by the time you finish anyway you'll probably change your mind i know you got a lot of stuff going on pick what makes you happy and i just read this book by um, evan carmichael called momentum and he had this boom 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 test and i thought what's the boom 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 test that's when your heart go boom 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 when you feel like doing something and you feel this strong sensation in your heart it's a beautiful feeling it's almost like an anxiety attack when that happens that could be it like yeah anyway i'm not gonna carry on Thanks, guys, for listening. I appreciate you. It's your girl, Steph. Take care.